Highly known for its difficulty and time requirement, Classic WoW was the best time period to discover items that would make your stay in Azeroth easier and much more enjoyable. Here are 8 extremely useful items that increase your quality of life as well as improve your chance of survival in sticky situations, or even just get you from one point to another faster. Obviously there are so many more out there in the world, but these are my personal favorites. The Azure Silk Belt is one item you should keep on you at all times, as it just makes traversing bodies of water so much quicker. 15% extra swim speed is no scoffing matter, especially when it's an equipable effect. To add on to all of this, it's incredibly easy to make. You can have a tailor make it, and all you'll need is 16 silk cloth and 1 elemental water, which can be farmed from virtually every water elemental in the game. The other items you should grab are 2 blue dye and 2 fine thread from any tailoring vendor. Finally, grab an iron buckle from the auction house or a blacksmith and you're ready to have it made. This belt goes great with water breathing abilities and makes the occasional underwater quest we encounter so much easier. It's a cloth item so absolutely everyone can use this as long as you're level 30. Swift boots are another crafted item that will increase your movement speed once every hour by 40% for 15 seconds. Unfortunately they are leather so cloth wearers are out of luck here. I wouldn't recommend keeping them on, but if you're headed somewhere far before you've got your mount, this boost is pretty solid. Even if you do have your mount, these boots are excellent for escaping a cave or giving yourself a boost if you know you're about to run through some mobs. What we'll need to craft them is 10 heavy leather, 2 swiftness potions, and 2 thick spider silk. I found all of these for relatively cheap on the auction house, but you'll probably encounter the spider silk while leveling, so hold on to it until you're level 35. Lastly, grab some silken thread from any leatherworking vendor. These boots do require a recipe, so it might take you a minute to find someone to make them for you, but the overall weight can save you a run back or a few minutes in the leveling process. Next we have the Hydrocane. The staff simply gives the player underwater breathing. This one is up there on my personal list, as this makes the occasional underwater quests so much easier. The best part is, you can swap in and out of it freely since it's a weapon. You can get it off the second boss in Nomer. If you're a high level, it can be easily farmed. Once you enter the dungeon, run down the path and just jump down onto the large gear. Slowfall helps here, but isn't necessary. There you should see a giant tainted water elemental named Viscous Fallout. Kill him, and 33% of the time, he should drop it. While we're still in Nomergon, we can head to the final boss, Mechchanir Thermoplug. This item's drop chance is fairly decent, sitting at 20%, Meaning, of course, that it'll take you 43 runs across multiple characters to finally get it. Not that that happened to me or anything. Anyways, to expedite the amount of time we spend here, make sure you pick up the workshop key from the Electrocutioner 6000, which will enable you to enter through the workshop entrance, cutting about 75% off your walk time. So what does the reactivator do that makes it so special? It shoots a massive arc of lightning out in front of you, enabling you to pull large packs of low-level enemies. This item makes farming much easier, making the first pull every 30 minutes wipe everything out as it usually hits for pretty decent damage. To add on to all of this, every class can use it, and it has incredible stats for a caster. As an added effect, it gives you a sort of thorns-like buff for 10 minutes that just returns somewhere around 5 to 10 damage. This item is probably one of my favorites on the list, and I'd hold on to it for quite a while based on how useful it is. The best part being you can get it quite early on in your leveling journey. Coming up is the Nifty Stopwatch. This one is the easiest to obtain on the list, and just like the Swift Boots, will be running 40% faster, but for 5 seconds shorter, for a total of 10 seconds. The cooldown is 30 minutes though, making it much better. Before we head out to Lot Wolveradius, stop by the auction house and pick up Frost Oil, made by Enchanters, and a Gyro Atom, made by Engineers. Make your way to the northwestern part of Badlands and speak to Lot Wolf. He'll just have you give him the items, and then have you run over to his assistant, and then he just hands you the stopwatch. We can get this questline at 35, so you have 5 levels of increased movement speed before you can mount. And also, it's handy for running flags in Warsong Gulch, or just running through caves and escaping mobs. The most popular item on the list is the Skull of Impending Doom. I won't stick on this for too long, since everyone should know how to get it by now. What the skull does is increase your movement speed by 60% for 10 seconds, but during those 10 seconds you lose quite a bit of health and mana, sitting on a 5 minute cooldown. To snag this item, we need to head to the south central part of the Badlands, to Theldrin the Lost. 
Zaldrin will give us Solution of Doom, which just requires us to grab a tablet from the entrance area of Oldaman. Once returned, he'll send you to either Undercity or Ironforge to speak to Garrick Bonegrip or Keeper Beldegar, respectively. At this point, you'll receive a note that reads, The Star of Zelye. An ogre in Alterac, Grelborg the Miser, was the last known owner of this gem, whispered to empower its owner with the ability to commune with the other worlds. Sources tell us Grelborg wanders the ruins of Alterac in the Alterac Mountains, searching the rubble and debris for more relics. Based on the note, we can find Grelbog wandering the old ogre-infested ruins of the Alteric Mountains. The next page reads, The Hand of Dagon. Dagon is a creature of deep waters, worshipped by murlocs and Duswallow Marsh. They entice him to the surface with a special sea kelp, enchanted by their shamans. Hunt the murlocs, gather their enchanted kelp, then place it on the murlocs' altar. Dagon will come, and you will be waiting. I want that hand. The final page reads, The Legacy Heart. Old texts say that he who possesses the Legacy Heart fears not the grave. Perhaps this is true, for the owner of the heart, the troll Mog, is known as Mog the Undying. A witch doctor of the Skull Splitter tribe, Mog dwells in Stranglethorn ruins of Zilmamwe. The pages are fairly explanatory on what you must do. Keep in mind that all of the mobs you'll fight for this quest are elite and quite tough, so bring a group if you're picking up this quest at the minimum level. Next we have Olaf's all-purpose shield, and for those that can't use shields, the Fogger elixir. Slowfall items are incredibly useful and decrease the time spent getting from one location to the other, as well as helping you get away from the opposing faction on certain occasions. Olaf's all-purpose shield can be picked up by Horde only from Olaf, who is the first dwarf in Oldeman. The shield will give you a slowfall for 10 seconds on an hour cooldown. Alternatively, we can grab the Nogginfogger elixirs from Marin Nogginfogger and Gadgetson, which can buff us with a 2 minute slowfall about 33% of the time. Last but not least, we have Lincoln's Boomerang. This trinket allows you to throw a boomerang on a 3 minute cooldown, dealing moderate damage and having a chance to stun or disarm the target. This item is incredible for all classes as it gives you an instant cast attack so you can steal mobs away or just hit mobs that are high up especially if you're melee. The downside is that the questline is 13 parts and has you traveling all across Kalimdor. Furthermore, some of the final parts can't be completed unless you're partied up with at least one other person. We start things off at a wrecked raft in the southeastern part of Ungoro Crater. To complete this quest, just swim to the bottom of the pond nearby. Grab and empty the contents of the sack you find in the pond and head to Lincoln in Marshall's Refuge. Lincoln will then send you to Winterspring to speak with Denova Snowden, where you'll be killed by a hunter that's five levels higher than you. Denova wants you to head back to Feralus and collect some Evo Root. Meet up with Greg and Brewspear found here and buy the bait he sells. You'll need it to progress. We then head south to some ruins and set the bait up near Miblon Snarltooth. If you don't do this, he'll attack you, unless your server is scripted incorrectly, just like mine. You should then be able to walk in through the magical wall and grab the root from any of the three springs. Return to Gregan and he'll give you the Vidir elixir. Do not drink this or it will kill you. Head back to Denova and she'll send you back down to Gadgetson where you'll need to drink the elixir in the graveyard, which should kill you. Walk north until you encounter Garion who will then send you back to Lincoln. We then enter the cave in Marshall's Landing and talk with JD the Gnome. JD sends us to the Fellwoods to speak with Arid and Bluewind, who will want us to collect 11 claws from any of the beasts in Fairless and an Iron Tree Heart from any of the Treants. Once complete, Aridin will give us the Book of Aquar so we can summon and kill Aquamentus and Teneris. Aquamentus is a bit difficult, so depending on your class you may need assistance. Once Aquamentus is slain, grab his silver totem and head back to JD in the Cave of Marshall's Refuge. JD will send you back to Lincoln, who will then remember that you need to kill Blaze Runner, an elite fire elemental in the center of the volcano in Ngoro. This quest is pretty tough, so make sure you bring friends. Once Blaze Runner is slain, run into his cave and pick up the Triforce. Now we can return to Lincoln, who will give us his boomerang as well as a sword or offhand, depending on what you want. Although this quest is quite long, the experience is well worth it, and this trinket is pretty awesome. And it's a giant Legend of Zelda reference, so what more could you ask for? Well, that was it. Thank you for watching. The Blackrock Depths Guide will be coming out soon. As always, I hope you enjoyed, and have a fantastic day.